requirement of the logistics. So you require 8 GB of RAM with a virtual machine. So this can be on Mac, Windows. So once you have the virtual machine, you need to install install the Cloudera VM. So Cloudera VM comes with the Hadoop, HBase, Hive. Big. Okay. So here are the course objectives. Uh, so we are going to talk what is big data, the motivation for Hadoop, uh, the core technologies we are going to use with Hadoop and how they are going to make our life easier. We are going to talk about HDFS and the MapReduce framework and we are going to talk about the associated projects uh, of Hadoop itself and how what are the areas where they are using, they are being used. Then we'll move into introduction of Pig and Hive and HBase. So this we already discussed. We'll have uh, classroom lectures and labs. Okay. So what is big data? So this is one of the most overhyped terms that you hear nowadays, right? But what exactly is big data? So according to Wikipedia, it's a collection of data sets so large and complex that it becomes very difficult to process using the database management tools. The challenges include capturing, storage, sharing, analysis and visualization. So if I can extend this, so big data is data that exceeds the processing capability of the conventional database systems. So what I'm trying to say is your conventional database will not be able to handle this data because big data is too big, it moves very fast or it doesn't fit into the structures of your database architecture. Because your database has a defined schema and the variety of data that's coming into the, into the, into the system is basically too varied and you will not be able to fit everything in your database. So most people would consider a data set of terabytes or more to be big data. But there are some companies who add success on using big data on smaller chunks of data. So one reasonable definition is that it's a data which can't be comfortably processed on a single machine. So big data is very large. It's loosely structured data set that defies traditional storage. And it's mostly unstructured and semi-structured. So 80% of the world's information available today is basically unstructured. And unstructured information is growing at the rate of 15 percent faster than the structured information. If you look at the the data that's created in the world the last two three years, ninety percent of ninety percent of that was created just in the last two years. And CPUs are CPUs are growing so fast that a commodity server today is close to the power of supercomputer five years ago. Why I say this one is today you have laptops with quad core and octa core, which were available in the older days in just supercomputers. We never had thought that, but now it's available on the laptop. Okay, so storage cost on spinning disks is approaching free. So basically, if you look at the storage cost in 1981, probably an MB would have cost at $700 and probably 95 came down to $10 per MB. And now, probably cost like two cents per GB. I mean, if you take it by a rack space, then probably you need to pay like one cent or so. So storage has become very, very cheap. So what are the characteristics of big data? Okay, so in 2001, uh, Gartner uh, published a report on the characteristics of big data. So these are basically called the three V's of big data. So what are these three V's? Let me explain on three of these. So first is the volume. So this refers to the size of data that you are dealing with. So what I'm talking about is the data you're dealing from your MBs to GBs, GBs to petabytes. So I have some examples. So power companies convert 400 billion smart meters to better predict power consumption. If you look at Twitter, Twitter turns 12 terabytes of tweets a day into product sentiment analysis. So sentiment analysis is basically, for example, a brand got a presence on Twitter, like social website like Twitter or Facebook, and people start talking about their brands or products. So what a company can do is, they can 
collect all the tweets from that particular hashtag and they can process the data and see what people are talking about the company and the products so that gives that basically gives out what's the sentiment of the customers on the company or on the on their particular products so similarly uh, if you look at uh, the election elections right so even you can collect that data and see what's a trend and who is going to who is the leader the, the people are talking about mostly about so that gives some idea on uh, where the sentiments are so I think mostly nowadays companies are working with Twitter to get the data for sentiment analysis and also to determine how the stock how it affects the stock price of the company just before the uh, results okay so let's talk about the second V uh, this is basically the velocity so the velocity refers to the speed at, at which the data is being generated right and the speed at which it needs to be made available for processing so I have some examples for example uh, bank a bank analyzes 5 million financial transactions per day to identify fraud and this is a huge data right if you look at a per day basis a huge data and the other thing is telco telco is one of the biggest stores in uh, US and Europe and they analyze 500 million calls a day to predict the customer satisfaction so let me give some more data on the velocity so all the data that's coming to system has to be accepted you cannot throw away that particular data right so you need to accept it and store it the data store that particular data even when it's coming at the rate of terabytes or more per day so if you can't store it as it arrives we'll just end up discarding some of it and that's what we absolutely want to avoid and third one third character to a big data is variety so variety is the type the variety of data that is coming to the system so this can range from social tweets from Twitter or Facebook phone calls the sensor data right for example the sensor data of an aeroplane I mean an aeroplane collects one GB or one TB of data every minute or so so that's a huge data similarly human generated data like documents emails video still images so all this constitute different varieties of data and for example government they monitor like thousands of live video feeds from surveillance cameras to detect faces and license plates of this their interest what is metering data so this basically uh, for example every one of us use electricity right from the government and this is a basically used on the meter meter basis so every point to use or every uh, every point in a meter that you use is is basically meter data so government captures this data as a meter data and they also see the trends how what are the seasons where the there's maximum usage of electricity what are the times where there's minimum use of electricity so basically with that they can also base their buying decision buying of electricity right on that particular season and that is metering data so here are some uh, big data examples <clears throat> so Walmart it handles more than a million customer transactions per hour feeding database of four three petabytes so what Walmart has done uh, probably a few years before is they they had this huge customer base and the records of the customers of the shopping transactions so they went back and analyzed that particular data and they saw uh, so basically they were able to make out what are the products most products where the customers are buying and what are the times and the weekdays where the customers are shopping more often so what they found is uh, during the uh, end of Friday there are many people who are actually coming for shopping as compared to the other days of the week and Facebook so Facebook stores more than uh, 40 billion photos and all this data is being indexed into high tables and the reports being generated on that insurance firms so insurance firms use big data Hadoop just to spot the suspicious claims from the repository and Tesco Tesco has a loyalty card program so which tracks shopping habits of 16 million families 
and record 6 million transactions a day. So this basically helps Tesco decide what items to be put on sale right, and where to place the items. So after the study, uh, Tesco made some changes in their uh, the malls. So uh, what they basically saw is there's an increase of 12% in sales. And all this data they were able to fetch from their uh, archives. And one example is NSA. So NSA is building a 2 billion facility in Utah, so which is estimated to store 100 years of world economic communication data. So I think this is called the project uh, pyramid. And I, I think you guys can recollect this because a guy called Snowden has uh, leaked this to the world. So he wants to know what's the difference between the structured and unstructured data. <clears throat> so, so what happens in a data RDBMS? So you basically have a, okay, DB2, that's fine. Yeah. So in RDBMS you basically have a static schema. So that means you define, you predefine all the columns before you insert the data, right? And it's very difficult to change this particular schema. And before you insert the data, you need to prune your incoming data. So for example, if you, if you want to just pull out a date column, right, date value. So you need to pull that out and insert into the date column itself. And if you look at unstructured data, so unstructured data, as I said, these are basically your phone call data. So these can be in various formats like MP3. You can have video files. It can be in MP4 or MPEG. And you can have text files which doesn't follow any particular text standard. So what I mean a text standard is you can have a UTF-8 uh, character encoding that's coming in. You can have a and it, it can, there's no rule that it should follow a certain pattern, right? So one file you can have a username on the line one and in the second file you can find a username in probably line 10. So this is what we are talking about in structured data. 